everybody on their own personal time and also the engineers who have come down and uh, the Sarah Plus and the Park area who want to join the Denver schedule too. Uh, my name is Mike Murphy, I'm a member of the town board. The engineer who is Mike. Uh, Leslie Heaney, a member of the board. Joe Rockland, a member of the board up here. Our engineers gave us a presentation about, uh, in April preliminary introduction of what their findings have been in looking at the Lauren Road over the year and a half months during various seasons. And they have compiled a report that we reviewed. There were some citizens sitting in that meeting had some questions and we felt rather than limit it just to those few, we have opened it up to the public. The decision to move in here because of the weather tonight, the temperature here in the firehouse. But what this is, is just a uh, presentation meeting. Uh, although board members are here, we are taking minutes, we're recording it, we're also videotaping it so it can be posted on our website. Just to give the people that live on Killard Road and are interested in what's happening on that road, what the engineers have found. They have given us various levels of their findings various levels of their recommendations, which with associated cost, the board will then take all that information, we'll, we'll go through it, and we will come up to a, a, either a series of decisions or a, a long-range plan on how to address it. When you signed in, there was also a sheet of paper. If someone thinks of a question after the presentation that they would like answered, if you would fill that out, the engineer confirm will get back to us by July 5th. Yeah, we're 30-day uh, period. 30-day period, we'll take the questions in, we'll analyze and so on. They will also want some samples of some of the materials they will reference in their film presentation, and then we can go from there. Um, so welcome, hope it's informative for everyone, and hope it shows that the town has been taking the concern of Warren Road seriously. But as we got more and more into it, we found that it is a very complex problem that needs to be looked at, and our engineers are helping us resolve that problem. So Dan, are you ready? Good evening, everybody. Uh, first thing I'm going to start off with is we did our best with the um, projector tonight. If the video quality is not the greatest, do not worry. This document is going to be given to the town. It will be up online. So uh, take a closer look at it and you're able to see uh, what we're showing. I also have a quick video that we're going to show towards the end of this. If it's not as visible as we wish it would be, that's going to be given to the town as well. So just in case it's a little hard to see, don't worry. That information will be available to you uh, in the time for that session. So, Mike? Yeah, no problem. You saw the video? All right, uh, that's a little better. Okay. So, uh, some quick introductions. Um, the project, although we are working with the town board, we work very closely with the town highway uh, superintendent, uh, Joe Spettinola, and uh, the deputy uh, highway superintendent as well. So, again, the introductions from Collier's Engineering Design, Dan Farnan, uh, the engineer that's uh, um, project managing uh, the study. Also, tonight, uh, we have um, Joe Hefferman in the back. Uh, he's a project engineer. He's been the one who's been out to the site the most, although I've inspected it a number of times. Basically, uh, all of the uh, additional inspections that we did this past year in 2023, that's Joe, and he's helped uh, a lot with uh, um, the report that we put together. Um, again, the information that's shown here, all the emails and the contacts, that will be available. So, our agenda for tonight, introduction, talk about the purpose a little bit of the meeting and the timeline of this project. Um, there's a section I have here, engineering terms. Uh, when we met with the uh, town in April, there was an obvious need to at least go over some of the terms that I'm using. I'm not going to be able to educate everybody tonight on all the engineering things, but I hope to at least be able to bring the terms up and give you guys an idea of um, when I say what type of material or when I say what type of treatment, you'll have a better idea of what we're talking about. Uh, section three is a review of the finding 
feel free to use the comment forms, use the email. If you do email the town, make sure your subject title you can say uh, Kilmar Road so that they know the to group that too. Because you're going to have conversations after this, you're going to have questions that come up in two weeks. It's perfectly fine. Send those in so that we at least have uh, uh, understanding of where your concerns lie. So the purpose of time alone for the property. Again, the purpose of this meeting is to make sure that we are officially informing the public of our findings. We're going to present our recommendations so you understand what those are, have the ability to discuss with the community um, and gain more feedback, and then have this open for a period of 30 days. So where did this all start? In 2021, we can drive Obviously, there were a number of issues with the road that came up, whether they were um, all in complaints or information that the town highway had known about the road. The road was of concern, and the town decided we need to get an engineer involved to uh, take a closer look and provide recommendations. Colliers was brought into the project in June of 2022, and between June and November of that year, we went through and did our first take, our first evaluation with the draft report. The draft report was given over to the town and in January of 2023 we had our first presentation to the town board. Uh, a number of questions came out of that presentation and it generated the need to do a little bit more work. So through the course of all of 2023, our firm uh, went back out and observed the conditions of the road during winter and spring. Uh, we did a traffic study looked at cost-benefit analysis of all our recommendations to the town and board to have better understanding of the cost. And uh, a land survey of the entire corridor from the start of the farm to the end of the corridor was done by another firm of CT Man, and that was uh, um, submitted to the town uh, late last year. So at the end of 2023, we took all that information and created a second version of the report, which should be the one that is up on the Moving forward to the spring, we're here today with our public information meeting. And what I had anticipated is after the common period, summer of this year, going to fall, that was the schedule for the board, the board and the town will decide what are the next steps for um, any kind of repairs, reclamation, and so on to the roadway. So, engineering terms, we'll start very basic. Paved and unpaved. For the uh, Federal Highway Administration, paved roads are any roads that have a semi-permanent surface placed on it, such as asphalt and concrete. If you take anything from this, remember, paved roads, asphalt, concrete. Unpaved roads, not those two things. So an unpaved road can be comprised of dirt, rock, gravel. That is the main difference. So when I use that term and when we're using that term in our report, Paved road is talking about putting asphalt, just like the roads that are out here or the county roads or the state roads. Um, and then if we talk about unpaved or gravel, that is good. Um, the anatomy of the road, and I apologize again for these uh, uh, graphics not being very clear. Talking about how the road is made up, if you were to cut the road in half and take a look at it, down at the very bottom is what we call subgrade. That's just the natural soil that's underneath that road. Right? The natural earth that has always been there and there's no way. The next layer, sub-base course, that's the first foundation of the road. It's usually gravel. And that is going to be um, set down first before what uh, usually is an asphalt-based course, what you can see out here, but killer and road being a gravel road. The base course and then on the very top, we put what's called the surface course or wear and course. Wear and course is exactly what it is. It is what we travel on. It is sacrificial. It is to be worn down and then replaced and worn down and replaced. All roads have that um, topping course, a uh, topping stone, a top layer of asphalt, and uh, over time it will degrade and maintenance will be done in order to reestablish it. But the base course usually stays exactly what it is. So the foundation of the road stays as it is. One thing to consider that comes up a lot in our report is over time that 
base course, just like the foundation of a house, it can crack, it can get a little weak, and it does require to be rebuilt when it comes to a work done. So that's one of the things to pay attention to in our recommendations is when the base goes bad, no matter what you put on top of that road, you're never going to have a road that uh, is, is fully where it should be as a bridge break. Road crack. So the crown of the road is basically, again, cut the road in half and take a look at it, you'll see slope. It slopes one way or the other. And the purpose of that crown is to make sure that water that falls from rain drains off the road appropriately. Uh, drainage is, is uh, one of the worst things that you can have uh, happen to a road that you a drainage to properly taken care of. Uh, storm water will go down the road that doesn't have proper drainage and will road it away, especially the gravel road. Or if, it's, if there's no ground, it will sit in the road and it will seep down to the road and you can get uh, pop holes from that. So you have to have a crown road to get that water off the road. That's not as quickly as possible, but you want it always to be moving off to the side and usually into uh, road ditches when it's a rural road. If it's an uh, urban road like this, there's storm drains that are going to. But that's basically what we mean by crown, having that slope that you can walk off the road as soon as possible. And then the materials used. Um, unfortunately, there are a number of names for gravel. It, you know, it, it's just one of the things in our industry I could not tell you every single name that we have for different types of gravel that we use. What I want you to focus on is there's really two types of gravel. There's a manufactured gravel and there's a natural gravel. Manufactured gravel, if you've ever heard of the crusher run, if you've ever looked at a landscaping um, uh, store, Looks for getting a little gravel, which we call that crusher room, it is stone that has been quarried. It has been blasted out wherever it was, large stone, and then it gets crushed. And we have two samples of crushed stone over here that uh, during the presentation or after, you're welcome to go take a look at it and you can see what the difference is. This is a manufactured material. So in the industry, um, there are different uh, names uh, that usually go by numbers. So you'll hear 57s, 56s. The uh, picture that's here is 8s, and it just it's a size of what they crush it to. The natural gravels are what you would find naturally. You go to a quarry, you get right out of the earth, that gravel is there, it gets screened, and you end up just using that material naturally as it is. Occasionally, you'll hear the term hydrogen right there that is that natural gravel. A lot of what gets put onto the gravel roads in uh, this area of the state is usually that item. And if you're looking for the um, a sample of it, there is uh, next to the crushed gravel um, a sample that I'm going to talk about a little bit more in detail that would be um, what item 4 looks like. And then millions. Last time that we met with the town, I mentioned millions. One of the citizens that asked exactly what our requirement is. It is recycled asphalt material. So when the road has reached the end of its life, usually what they'll do is they'll go and grind up all the asphalt. Anybody who's driven through construction, you drive through, you get all of those lines after they know about the asphalt road. They take that asphalt, put it in the dump trucks, it goes somewhere, it usually gets pulverized down into the individual size of the rocks. And then that material can be reused. It can be used in concrete, it can be used in asphalt, it can also be used in gravel mix. And quite often, because it's a very economical material, it's very uh, easy and advantageous for anybody who needs gravel to use it, mix it into their current stockpiles because it is a, it's a, a cheap material, basically. But it works. It works for 20 years on the road somewhere else. It can continue to work after. So by using the term minimums, that's what I'm talking about. The item four that we have up there as a sample, it has millions of extensions in it. So if you're interested to see what it looks like, it's in the boxes over there. The last one, chip and seal. Uh, this was also something uh, I met with the town in April that was mentioned, and I just want to make sure we have an uh, understanding of what it is. It is a wearing course treatment. And what happens
happens is after the base of a road has been repaired, it emulsifies. So it's kind of like a tar or a wool. It's a very thin liquid that we spread down over the road, and then very small stone chips is poured over top of that. And after it sets, it's a good wearing surface. Some chip steels will last five to seven years before you have to do any more repairs. Um, it's, it's important to understand it doesn't really fall in the category of paved or unpaved. It's a sealer. It seals the top and it leaves you a gravel look from, um, as an end product. And I have samples in the video. I'll um, show you what that's out of this way. But this road here in the picture, I know it's hard to see. That is a chip seal. It basically just looks like gravel. Oh, the other thing too. Chip seals can be put on asphalt roads that you can put on the roads. It doesn't matter. Um, and again, I wish this was a little bit better, but this is an, an example of chip seal. Um, so the dark part that you see here, that's the emulsifier that gets put down. This is the process of putting um, stone down. You can see the different color of the stone when it first comes out of the truck. This lane was already done. Although this is grainy, um, it is basically a gravel look. It's a gray gravel look. So our findings from the uh, first part of the report, everything that was done in 2022. This section of the presentation, we uh, did, I think, about a 45 minute presentation to the town in January of uh, 2023. I believe that it, is, it was recorded, it's probably on. So as I go through this, this is going to be one person that we're going to If anybody is interested in what was talked about, that meeting is obviously recorded and uh, we're going to take a look at that. So the project limits, uh, three and a quarter miles from State Route 343 uh, down to Chestnut Ridge Road, um, one of the 20 gravel roads that the town has, and uh, of course the southern portion of the road uh, it turns right at the uh, town of Long. So some of the citizens that are on the road are in the town of Newton Vale, or the town of Long. Uh, as of uh, 2022, when we did the uh, report, we found a total of 65 tax parcels that were there. So about 65 total residents, although I'm sure that's a little different or has changed, uh, or may have changed since then. Um, but that was the scope of everything that we looked at for all of our items in the original uh, study. Coming out of that study, the major points of concern, drainage. We looked at the road and we said the drainage that's coming off through the rainstorms is not that where it needs to go. And it's, it's going, falling down the roadway, it's eroding the surface stone, and it's just causing a number of issues. And then in some areas, the crown at that time was not really established, so the water could sit in the center of the roadway get some potholes because it was just sitting there digging it up and then it had potholes. Um, so it was starting to affect the base, the foundation of the road with those potholes. So that was the major, major thing that uh, came out of that study with. The other issues were still there. Wear and tear, um, a number of flooding areas. Uh, there was obvious um, uh, damage that looked like from heavy trucks that had gone through recently after one of our visits. So, that was uh, leading us towards just taking, uh, needing to look at traffic and understanding how many trucks are really going through the road. Um, some of the geometric limitations is obviously that 90 degree bend at the southern end, so if anything would be done and that be fixed or made more safe, it would take a lot, but those were things that we took a look at to at least advise the town of what would be needed for some of the safety concerns. Um, we looked at soil conditions and then some of the structural um, and again, with those potholes and some of the evidence we saw, it's how the foundation of the road, it, it needed some uh, repair, for sure. So the drainage was causing issues on the surface, and the base itself, the foundation, was not exactly uh, what had been told to Leaving that meeting, there was more data requested. One of our recommendations was to make sure to do a survey for the whole corridors with the town of New all the land that they own, so if there's any future projects, they know where they can work and where they would have to talk to the landowners about anything. Um, we were asked to observe the road during the winter and spring because our, our uh, report went from summer to fall. And we understand it would be very important to see the winter and spring, so we were able to do those observations and document that into our report as well. Um, 
we take pictures and, and make sure that we're seeing everything that the citizens are seeing during those times of year. Um, we observed the spring fall, and uh, one thing, unfortunately, I think during that season, it was a little mild. We know that there are other winters that are much worse. We did our best during that season to capture everything that we could, but we do understand we might have saw a mild. But the wear and tear was definitely there. And again, these pictures were hard to see, but the potholes going down the center of the roadway, uh, a lot of the wear on the surface, which is the loose gravel that's there, is all kind of migrated. Some of that will naturally happen with the gravel road. When you have plows clearing the road, it's going to get cut up. You do have to just understand gravel roads take maintenance, they need maintenance. So there is going to be a little bit of that. But the potholes were also the most concerning, because that's telling you the foundation is getting. Uh, uh, impact and damage. So that's what we were really focusing on from our, uh, our visits out for all of these months. And again, these pictures aren't clear, but a lot of them are showing a number of hot holes and a lot of uh, surface um, course that have been uh, uh, taken away by the bottles or just the normal way of traffic that's a little bit So a survey was performed by CT Man Associates. Uh, during the course of 2023. Uh, the findings that we have from that, the right of way width. So the distance between a property line on one side of the road to the other side of the road, that width, it varies all through the whole entire road. It's not uniform. In some areas, it's, well, it's very wide. It's wide enough for any improvements that we suggest to the town to be done within the lands that they own and have the right to. And then in other areas, it's extremely and portions of this road are what right, is called a user road, which means that the town may only have rights to uh, the road itself, right up to the edge of the gravel on each side. And then the area outside of that, they don't own. So as I mentioned, some of the areas were adequate for the uh, adding the drainage improvements that we're uh, looking for. The survey did find uh, drainage easements on the private property, so that's areas where the water is supposed to go from the roadway through a private property into the stream that might be nearby. So there are a few of those that the town have rights to. Um, and then all the wetlands up and down the road were located so that the town is aware of where they can work, where they can't work. If any of the revenue needs to be done, we know that that would be an area for a permit uh, from whoever the jurisdiction is on those wetlands. And then last, what that survey did provide is any future design on the road. There's a base map, there's topography, there's all the existing data. So the town is now set up if a design moves forward with the data that they would need um, to move uh, on to one of these recommendations. Again, sorry about the uh, image quality here. But the traffic study was conducted in May and June of 2023. Uh, we used available data on the county group and the state road, and we combined that with um, it was six different locations that we went and tested and took different counts on. Two of those locations were on the Pillar Road, the rest of them were at intersections on uh, uh, Chestnut and uh, up on to uh, uh, 343. We found uh, it was really the tail of two roads. Right? It's one road, to one road, but on the north end, there was 155 cars per day moving on average. On the south end, only 66. So what that's telling us as engineers is a lot of traffic's coming in from the north end, finding the destination, turning around on the north end, and leaving on the north end. Only some cars are passing through, and then the local traffic that goes on the south end is obviously passing through. So it was very telltale from uh, everything that we saw in the report that it's, it's almost like there's two roads there. There was uh, a measurement for truck traffic, and when I say truck traffic, I mean heavy traffic. I'm not talking about pickup trucks, I'm talking about things that weigh five tons of grain. So we found that it was 6% uh, traffic, so that's about 10 vehicles per day in the time period that this traffic study was done. I do understand.
the operating speed. So that's the speed that everybody's actually tracking versus the posted speed. Again, the tail of two roads on the north end of the road, we found that um, the traffic is definitely moving faster than the posted speed limit. On the southern end of the road, where it's more narrow, and it would be expected that the speed would be slower, the speeds would um, measure that being slower than the south end. And then the last part of what came out of our study is we did not see a clear indication of people using the learned road as a shortcut or a pass-through. It was a question that had come up early uh, in our process back in 2022 to just to take a look and see if that was occurring, but there was no real indication of that. If you think from the numbers we have, 65 properties, if every single one of those properties was a residence and everybody has two cars, it's 130 cars, so everybody uses both of those cars, you'd expect 130 cars per day. You're about 155 to about 66 to 155. So it's within the range of what we would expect for this road. There's no clear indication that a thousand cars are coming from Chestnut Ridge or anything like that to go to uh, uh, the um, state road or vice versa. So into our recommendations. We had come up with five different recommendations and in the latest version of the report, we put a section for a hybrid version, and um, it was kind of mentioned. These alternatives do not have to be like blanket for the entire road. They could be used in one part of the road and then another alternative used in another part of the road. Or one alternative could be picked and it could be fixed. Do some one year, in the second year do some more, and the third year do some more. So, I'm going to go through each one of the five, but just understand we did say obviously the town can phase this as they need um, for whatever the economics might be. So the first alternative is just basic repairs. Look at the worst areas of the road. If there's a 100 foot section that needs to be dug up and redone, if there's a culvert that needs to be replaced, just go to those pinpoint areas, make those changes, and then when you're done, Put a new level of uh, topping stone on the entire road and reshape the road. The most basic of all the solutions, it would take care of the worst areas and it would prolong the road a little bit further in uh, its useful life. Alternative two is doing everything in alternative one plus adding drainage ditches down the side of the road where there's room and where we can get water to go to its natural course. Alternative three is the first alternative where there's major work through the whole entire roadway. It's what we're calling the minimum fill option. You do everything in alternative one or two. So we're going to do the spot repairs, replace the culvert that needs to be replaced, and then we're going to fill the ditches where we can do the ditches. Then, Go to the road and basically grind it up. Take the base that's there, grind it, and reset it. Because there's damage in that base, obviously, from a number of pictures. So we need to reestablish the foundation of the road. And after that is done, we need to put a new surface onto the road that will last. When we put that surface, we make it so that the crown of the road is 4%, which is what's needed for a gravel road, so that the drainage can go off to the sides. And then just have the annual maintenance to the roadway that's normal for any gravel road. The fourth alternative is a reconstruction. So everything that we did before, but instead of mill and fill, you just go through the road and you remove everything that's taken off site, it all goes away. And then you come back and you rebuild a brand new road with brand new material. And when it's all said and done, it's a gravel road again. So it's Think of it as just removing everything that's there and rebuilding a new road path. The one thing with this option that's a little different than the metal fill is this would be uniform width at the beginning of the road, 20, uh, yeah, 24 foot wide, all the way to the end of the road, 24 foot wide. So that's part of reconstruction to make sure that you have uniform roads the whole time. Alternative 5 is the exact same as alternative 4, except for at the end, you put asphalt. Um, so my gravel road will take it. So in 2023, we built into the cost benefit analysis and we used a, a guideline from 
Federal Highway Administration. Um, one thing to understand about gravel roads in the middle of our country, in Illinois, Indiana, Nebraska, Kansas, there are so many gravel roads. It's the majority of road roads. So when the federal government looks at gravel roads, there is a lot of data that's coming from that area of the country. That can be applied everywhere in the country. And this document that they have produced, uh, based on every, every experience that they're having in those areas, has kind of come up with a, uh, what they call a 10-step process to figure out when you pave a road, when you keep a gravel road, and then how to determine if you're going to repair a road and what gives you the best day for your car. We use all of those calculations. We plug in our data, our numbers on cost, and our five alternatives. And when it came out, the mill and the bill was the option that basically gave um, the town as, uh, the most benefit for what um, they could be spending. Uh, the basic repairs are extremely, you know, as far as the total cost, it's uh, almost economical. There's you know, not much cost with it. Drainage improvements, a little bit more. Mill and fill is right in the middle of the road. The gravel reconstruction is a little bit more than mill and fill. And then the asphalt pavement is very expensive. So when it's all said and done, we came up with mill and fill as being the best option. And again, the mill and fill and all the different things that will come with it about that will happen in that recommendation. And real quick, the picture that's here, that is one example of equipment that can be used to reclaim the gravel. There's a number of different types of grinders that are out there. That's just one of them. Give you an idea of what might go up and down the road, depending on the contractor who's selected. Alright. We had um, the opportunity to take a couple of uh, YouTube videos, basically. Splice them together to show you what some of these operations would look like. Figured that it would be good for you to see what is it when the road gets milled, what is it when it's filled, and then um, there are a couple of uh, uh, videos that we found. They're from um, firms that are selling equipment to towns. We're not here to do that, we're not advertising anything, so we cut some of those sections out. But the testimonies that those highway superintendents are giving, they really describe exactly what would happen to them. The video is probably going to be a little bit grainy, so you can see what you can see, and then once it's available online, please take a closer look. So I'll set those up here, and then we'll go through to it.
scrap at the bottom and build yourself back up. And farmers that were, we all know, we put them up called cross limestone. It's like three or four cross limestone. We use that as sort of a uh, soil cement type base. Uh, something that we really had available to us. And we tried to go 10 inches, 12 inches deep as a corn uh, we have a bad spot that we had in this pot we were from the crush run to it we were 12 inches deep. The deepest we possibly can to get it down to set that base back up. We do this after we run our zipper, we take the motor rudder and uh, we will knock this down. And then we get to the motor rudder and we run up. It's a big spike rubber. And what it does, it really packs this uh, down. Uh, the base, it packs it back. The tighter you get this base and the tighter you get it set up, the better off the road is going to be. Uh, also, the, the spike roll, you need to see so it's like a spike roll with big drums on it. We try to run our shoulders as much as we can uh, to tighten our shoulders up. Then we need a laboratory uh, drum packer to run over top of it after that. Uh, we will, when we come back naturally, this 56 rock because we need to open this road back up the track as soon as we can. But uh, you put five layers on there, but if you don't fix what's down here, they won't stack. They come back, it's going to come back to haunt you. The last thing that you saw after they had shaped it and compacted it, they put the top three stones down. So when he said 56, that's what I mean by. A lot of different places called gravel, many different things. In this part of the country, they call them 56s. That's the topic stone. So that's the surface or where it is. Just for any old potholes. You've got a pothole here, here, and here. Your motor comes down and you, and you put more base on it and you fill these up. We're the one that chill. We get a lot of trucks. The trucks come in and they just literally take that base right back out of those piles. What we've done to an old gravel road with lots of potholes in it that you continually have to redo, we wrap that up, compacted it, got it good, and everything compacted together where everything holds together. And it's just like you put down a new road. You don't have that, that pothole is not there anymore. You don't have a way to knock it out. We water that in and we get it good and wet. We can pack it back in, and we have no problem with that road anymore. We're working in, putting more base with it, grinding it up, we're using it, mixing it in with our base with lots of water, lots of compaction, and we turn it out to be what we've got right here. We've got a nice crown road. Right here, you can sit there with your foot, you take not any, anything with it. It's just like it's asphalt. This is just as hard as a rock. And this is what you want underneath your road. Now we'll come back in here and we'll chip seal this and we'll have a nice road again. Any other questions? Yes, sir. 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 Yes, causing erosion. It also makes people want to drive in the center of the road. When the crown is too low, the water stays in the road too long, making the surface soft and prone to ruts and problems. When the shoulder is high, it acts like a burn, causing the water to pond dangerously in the road. So again, all of that information, probably good day. You can type into Google and find videos like that yourself being interested. I wanted to take the opportunity to at least show some sort of illustration of what some of these things would look like. In my world of engineering and in the world of highway design, usually gravel roads like Florida Road, they are just maintained by the town. Um, the superintendent of highways usually has a program, and Joe has that program here. So it's not too often as engineers get involved. Videos like this, you know, they are the town super, uh, superintendent of highways uh, going out there just taking care of those roads. But when the roads are not taken care of, when those base failures happen, when the foundation needs to be redone, having an engineer come in, take a look, give an uh, opinion, and be able to document everything that's going on, it's important that it's advice so that the town can move forward. The last video that I was going to show is if the town moves forward with the middle 
So again, the emulsifier, the tar, is going first. The chips are being poured into the equipment, and then they're being placed on top of that tar. One line here has already been done, and it becomes, it looks like gravel, and it is gravel, and the road that this is being done on was gravel. So it basically just gives you a thin gravel where the course that can, when maintained properly, last five to seven years. And think about uh, chicken seal, or chicken, uh, excuse me, um, the, the, the emulsifier, it's a sealer. It keeps the water from getting down into the mix. So chips that are on top is that wear the surface that you're driving on, the emulsifier seals up the gravel that's underneath, and it helps prevent the water to get down helping to prevent pop holes of Pop holes can still happen. Please understand. You can go up and down the whole entire road with any of these recommendations. You can still have issues here and there that you can crop up. You will always crop up. There is not a single road out there that has lived for 30 years without a single problem. So even if the town invests money and goes through the repair of it, Normal maintenance is needed. And when acute issues do arise, which will happen at any road, you just have to take care of it over time. But when roads get old, they get repaired. And that would be what we're recommending basically for building. So at this time, I'm sorry for taking too long. I apologize for this more for the graininess of everything that continues. But I'd like to open it up if anybody has any questions. And if there's anything that the town board would like to ask,
mentioned the 4% crown. So when you went and you did your analysis, you obviously looked at whether or not we were hitting that threshold, and you did find that we probably didn't have it, particularly in the areas where there were potholes, right? And so the, in your illustration, you showed if it was, didn't have that crown, you would be more susceptible to either potholes or ponds of water and things like that. Was that your your finding? Was that part of it was the, the drainage and pitch, pitch issue that was causing one of the potholes? It's part of it. I think, um, so when Joe goes and does maintenance on the roads and places the, the gravel and has the grazer go down, he is reestablishing that 4%. One thing to understand about gravel roads is the 4% will go away. Wear the course will wear. It's sacrificial. You have to reestablish it. So I'm sure that as part of Joe's program, he's going through the roads and he is reestablishing that the grader. It can go away quickly if the base has problems or if it's a lot of water running on the road um, and it's eroding some of that way or if the trucks or even the vehicles are speeding down the road, it's going to move some of that where it works away. And once that's away and the base is exposed, now the base starts to, to the water starts hurting that base. And if the base already had cracks in it to begin with, it's just going to seep down there and it eats away. So it's a combination of both. Just understand there is a program to maintain those roads, and they will have 4%. And you just have to continue to make sure it has the 4%. So if I have to repair the base, right, more likely to be able to do that. Yes, by repairing the base, you're giving a good foundation. Think, think of the foundation of your house. Yeah. If the foundation of your house is cracked, you're always going to have that crack through the wall. you got to fix that first in order to avoid the cracks in the wall. Would you like to make a comment? Okay. Yeah. What process was used on Shady Hill Road? What process was used? On Shady Hill Road. Joe, the process that was used on Shady Hill Road, I know that the material was over here. I know it's a mix of item four millings, but uh, you definitely did Shady Hill Road. Yes, we did. And uh, there wasn't really much of a process. We did grade the road as we always do. And we put a mixture of millings and uh, gravel from the local quarry on the road. I don't know if you've seen it yet. Obviously, if you've it, if you get a chance, please take a look at it. It is not, it does not have the special needs of corn because it's not a chill and the drain is placed in flat, so the water is able to drain off in some way. Um, however, it has held up and the rebound has been graded this year. So uh, if you get a chance to take a ride down, you'll find the check cars that I've never seen. Uh, the road is not well traveled, but uh, again, there are big vehicles on it and it's construction this year on the last one. And it held up very well. And to, to relate that to our um, suggestion, what Joe was just describing, I would say that's recommendation one, the basic repairs, because in our basic repair recommendation, we said you go up and down the whole road with a new topic and you shake that. And that sounds a lot like what Joe did. Do you want the mic? No, that's fine. Um, if you decide if in Millenville, if that ends up being the decision that we've done here, will you lower the road in many of the areas that have been built up so high that they now create a problem. What I've noticed is topping has been placed constantly because we have this poor base. Yep. We keep adding topping, that topping keeps getting pushed. There are areas just outside my driveway where we have at least three foot topping filled in ditches and there are parts all over the road where we have a tremendous amount of material which probably could be built and reused for the road, which would help the ditches. It seems that Joe's doing a fabulous job of grading, but we've never had a system to remove the material from the ditch materials. And you're talking And so we keep filling these, we want this crown, we want ditch, but we have crown burn, and areas where water can run is just, so if in the maintenance program in the future, grading, I think, should not be the only thing that we invest our time in. If we don't have enough time and money to invest it in cleaning these ditches, we should figure out, can we do 50-50? Can we spend half of our time cleaning ditches? Half, but one year we'll do half the road ones. Because I think that, for me, when I look at this, I see these berms on the side of the road. 
I see the groundwater where people have cut down trees and there's increased groundwater, which you're going to deal with by putting it in the underground drains, which we really definitely, I think, need. But I'd like to see that, I see there are people that have paved their driveways where the road is higher than the driveway. And I feel like, and I know for me, I mean, you know, obviously it's working hard to do a good job. I don't want to deny that. But getting out of our road has been increasingly harder and harder and harder to get out of. Because we're on the downside. There are people that come out real quick now. But <laughs> so I just want to see if in million filling, is that something you can consider? Lowering that thing. Yeah. So okay. direct answer to that. If they go to mill and fill, yes, right into the shoulders where you're seeing on the berms, the idea would be to break that out, bring it into the material where you can. There is a point of caution that you have to just be careful of. Some of the road is wide enough where the town has the right to do that. Some of the road would have to take a look. You know, be on somebody's property line. And all the town needs to do is make sure they have permission. And it might sound counterintuitive, the gravel is on the road, it is not migrated to somebody's front, very front part of the property. But to do it legally, the town just has to make sure they have permission. But yes, the idea is you know, you fill, you grab all that shoulder material, you bring it back in if it's good, and then you reestablish the road. One thing I can say, um, these are these are not designs. These are the options that would have to be designed. And in design, you would the town would take a closer look at each one of those driveways and make sure that the entrance into the driveway is redone appropriately so you have slopes and not have an issue. So when you get into the side, each one of the driveways can look at that and Is there is there sorry, is there a requirement on the width of the road? Because it seems like we have way more shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Technically the road is the one way a one lane road. So under the guidances that we use for roadways, um, there's a, when it's a two lane road, we do usually have to so try to keep it at least uh, 16 to 18 feet wide, especially when it's two lanes, you want to have eight feet for a car going one way, a car going the other way. Now that's very narrow, not everybody's a comfortable going two way road, but that is the minimums that are required when you have two way. When it is a one way road, it has that's technically okay. So it's kind of a, a hard question to answer. Some of the options were to make you the road uniform. It may not be possible, or it would take a lot of work and a lot of purchasing the right way to make that happen. I believe what would likely happen with the mill and fill is most of the road would stay relatively the same width, um, just because the town has jurisdiction to the edge of that road, and that's what they would have to. Um, where around here in Dutchess County have they done one of these mill and fills? I've seen it done with laptop many times, but I've never done it before. Yep, and I, I will be completely honest, this is one of the reasons why I brought up uh, being an engineer, we usually don't get involved. That is true on a gravel road. I have not done a mill and fill on a gravel road. It does not mean that mill and fills reclamations do not happen on gravel roads. They are usually just done by the town directly contracted out or if the town has a they do it themselves. It definitely happens. The only way to reclaim a road is to mill it. So a process like what we were showing is usually the case. So what I would say is that, that just to finish, in Dutchess County or anywhere else where there's a community that does mill and fill reclamation, they're doing that same process. And those two testimonials, those guys sound like they're in the way down south. They have the trees down there. True. Yep. So, yeah. And, but, I mean, the federal guy, the uh, federal uh, highway administration guy is all over the place. So the same guy that's used in North Dakota is the same guy that is used in Texas, that's used in New York, that's used in California, and California has a federal place. Yeah. In our, in our report, we do mention Adams County and Colorado. Tremendous road program, and the majority of the roads. And this is an area of Colorado, not in the Rockies, it's still in the Great Plains. Um, the majority of this particular county's roads are gravel, and they have a, a tremendous program. But they also um, they have all the equipment or you know the abilities and means to do a lot of that stuff. But they definitely, in that part of the country, um, they're, they're doing no fills reclamations when they need to, and those gravel roads are. are once every 12 years, a major or more modern repair is so, Yes? Um, I 